In this session, we're gonna look at how we can assign custom coding to our subassembly components. I'm gonna start by assigning some codes to these points, point one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna select point one from the flowchart. I can also do that by clicking in the preview if I wanted to. I've got it here in the flowchart. If I come down to the properties area, I can see the point number. Down below, I can see the code. The code that I put here is the code that's gonna be used to generate the feature line in Civil 3D. I'm going to give this a code of crown. We'll assume this is gonna be placed at the crown of the road. The trick to adding codes is you wanna put them in these quotes. I'll type crown with the quotes, and then I'll press tab to accept that. Now, if you look in the preview area, you can see there's a codes toggle here. If I click that, we'll actually see the codes show up in the preview. So this is a nice way of being able to identify everything that has a code. Note just for a second that it also has comments. If I drag down through properties, there's also a comment area. If you wanted to add comments, you could display or not those comments in the preview area as well. So point one is considered a crown. Point two is going to be edge of traveled way. So I'll put the quotes on this, ETW. I'll press tab, let's back up a little bit. We can pan and zoom in here just like we can in Civil 3D. Just hold the wheel down to pan, roll the wheel forward or back to zoom in and out. P3, we'll code that one. We'll make that sub base. I'll press tab to accept that. And then point four, we'll give this one a code as well. We'll make this one sub base. I'll press tab. Okay, now we can add codes to the links. I'll click link one here. I could also get it by clicking point two in the flowchart. I'll drag down to the link area, and I can see that's link one. We're gonna give this a couple codes. I'm gonna call this top, and then I'll separate my codes with a comma. So top, and then the quotes, we'll do this one pave. I'll press tab to accept, and we can see that in the preview. L2, I'm gonna select that on screen here, and maybe we'll give this a code of datum. I'll press tab, we'll get L4. This link is gonna have a code of datum as well tab, and then we'll give uh, L3. I'm not going to code L3. I'll assume if this is a lane, I don't want the datum surface trying to go up in between two lanes if we're doing a symmetrical road. So that looks good. I've got one more code I want to assign. I want to assign that to the shape. I can do that by clicking it here in the flow chart, and we can see the shape code area. This is where I can type it. Same thing. I could, you know, we could type in here. We could call it concrete. I'll press tab to accept that. So in the event I'm pulling material quantities, I'm saying that this is concrete. Let me show you something else you can do. Maybe I'd like it such that these codes are editable within Civil 3D. This gives me even more flexibility when I'm creating my subassembly parts. I'm going to take this out. Instead, I'm going to come down and click input output parameters, and I'm going to create a new parameter. I'll choose create parameter, and this parameter is going to be a string or text. We'll change the parameter name here. I'll call this material. We'll drag over and we've got the display name. We'll call this lane material. And the default value, I'm going to make this asphalt. I'll press enter. So all I have to do now is assign that variable as my shape code. No quotes necessary. I'm just gonna go ahead and type material. I'll press tab to accept that. And you can see that now my shape code is assigned asphalt. The nice thing is when I use this subassembly part in Civil 3D, I will be able to manually go through and change that code if I want to. Let me also mention that this lane that I created, it's just a simple rectangle. So the entire thing represents asphalt. I could easily go through here and create additional vertical links and then horizontal links to define the other courses of pavement if I wanted to. So just a simple example to help get you started using the application. Now that we've gone through and assigned our codes for our various points, links, and shapes, in the next session we'll look at how we can save this subassembly and then import it and test it in Civil 3D.